Okay, so um, I posted a video just a little while ago um, talking about how not not every not everything is false. Not every word is false. Not every you know teacher is false. You know there there has to be some kind of balance here that you know you don't just get on YouTube and get on an angry rant and stuff. Yes, it's important to have discernment. It's important to have good teaching, but also it's important to have the heart and the mind of Christ. And uh, it is very much so important for you to um, to think critically about stuff. And it's also important for you to know, for you to have the fruit of the Spirit. You know, patience, love, kindness, those kinds of things. Now, um, there's some people who just instantly say, oh, you're just being a false prophet or whatever. Or you're just being a false teacher and, you know, you need to... Here's the thing. You, you catch more flies with, with honey than vinegar. And if you're trying to tell people about Jesus, it's going to be a lot easier if you, um, you know, actually care about the person rather than just going in, you're going to hell, and if I really care about you, I'll tell you about how much you're going to hell. It's like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but there has to be a point when you say, look, I, I love this person. I want them to listen, and uh, so I am going to, um, to take my time and do it right. You know, um, the, it, it doesn't make you more 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 righteous for getting angry all the time and saying, oh, I, you know, this the world today just doesn't want to hear the truth. It, yeah, I get what you're saying again, but it really just seems more like an issue with your own uh, foolishness. We're, we're supposed to be wise. We're supposed to go to this thing with with, with wisdom. So it, 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 it's on either or kind of situation. Yes, it is important that you have um, that you have discretion. It is important that you understand that you that you. You know, th those are all great things, but it's also important that you have the heart of Christ and, and the attitude of Christ. And uh, yes, I, I mean, I, I, it, it, it isn't it, it isn't good if you say that you love somebody and you you hide the truth from the, from them. Yes, but if anybody talked to you, it would put you off. If somebody talked to you like that, like you're talking to them, it would put you off. In fact, one time I did a test with somebody. As one of these Christians who, you know, tell them the truth, tell it like it is, you gotta, you gotta, oh, if you really love them. So I talked to him exactly like he was talking to them. And he got all upset and, and, and offended. And I said, look, now, hold on, hold on. Please forgive me for, for how I was talking to you. I was just trying to show you how you were talking to them. And uh, he ended up stopped talking to me. And, and I, I, I didn't mean for it to go that way. I, I was trying to help him to see about how he was just being abrasive for no reason. And there were better ways to talk to people, and he, he, it didn't go well. So you know that may, maybe there's something I could have done. Maybe I should have tried something else. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But so I, I want to look um, for just a little bit at. So if not everything is false, what does a false word, quote unquote, word from God look like? So when somebody says, "Oh, this is a word from God," and it's and it's, and it's not. Well, keep in mind that there's going to be some people who are genuine Christians, heartfelt Christians, and they're going to really think that something is from God, and they're going to say it, and they're just going to be off. And then there's going to be some people who are fake, and you know maybe they aren't saved, maybe they um, maybe they're just pretending to be saved, maybe they don't even pretend to be a Christian, and they're going to give you a word, and part of it's going to seem true, or it could potentially be true, but it's there's still a false prophet. See what I mean? Like just because something comes true doesn't mean that it's necessarily from God. Um, a great example of this was. Um, I knew somebody who went to a um, a psychic, and they told them about some, how something was going to happen on a specific day, and it did happen on that on that specific day. And they said that it was going to be life changing, and it was life changing. And um, did, were they a Christian? No. Was it a message from God? No. But yet they still had knowledge of something. See, the the idea here is that the demonic does still have power, and it would be completely just bogus to assume that it doesn't you know that it's just ah uh, it's whatever it's no 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 there is a certain element of, of power to darkness and that is something we need to be uh, be careful of because when uh, revelations tells us when when the time of the end comes and the false prophet and all that that they're going to be showing these signs and wonders and it's going to blow people away see it, it, the, the dark the dark does have um, an element of power to it. I'm not saying it's more powerful than God or that we need to be, you know, enamored by it or fearful of it, but we do not need to be aware of it. So whenever somebody comes to you and says, hey, you know, this word is from God. Um, I have a word from God for you. There's two quick things I'd like to say. First off, when somebody gives a word, if it's genuinely from God, it's gonna, there's going to be some kind of cohesion with your inner conviction. And what I mean by that is uh, it's going to be something that God has already been talking to you about, right? So maybe you've been reading and studying, and God says, you know, you, you really, 
um, you really need to need to forgive this person for what they did. And then somebody comes up and says, look, I, I, I really feel like I have a word from God for you that, that there's a person that you're not forgiving and it, it's gonna it's gonna weigh you down, and it's gonna eventually cause you to leave the faith. And you know, th- and so then it's like, well, how do I know that words from God? Well, because it goes right hand in hand with what you've already um, been hearing from God. Now, obviously, um, it's important not to get wrapped up in the mystical. You you definitely want to be be want to be tied in with with the Bible, uh, and 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 and. and going to a good church and whatnot, because it's very easy to get misled and it's very easy to mislead ourselves. So obviously when we get misled, we are unaware that we're being misled. And so if we have some kind of a check in place, that, that that's helpful. But then also we mislead ourselves where um, we allow ourselves to believe the lies and maybe we are, we're the ones telling the lies and it just gets to be further and further out of hand until we lose control and we are victims of our own lies. So uh, the first thing is, is there does need to be some kind of that. Now, some kind of a, a, a cohesion with your inner conviction of what God's been talking to you about. So it's very important that you stay in the Word, you stay in the Bible, stay in prayer, that you are um, knowledgeable and growing in the faith. Um, that, that, that's very important. It's very easy to be misled. There's a lot of people who, who claim, oh no, this is the truth, oh no, this is the truth. And everybody has their own opinion. So it's very easy to get misled. And um, words are going to be cohesive also with the Bible, or they're going to be at odds with the Bible. And if you don't know, then there's no way that you can know. And if you're just relying on mystical encounters rather than the firmness of the Bible, you're really going to be misled. But then the second off, there are three inner checks that you're going to have when somebody gives, quote unquote, a word from God. The first check is where you don't feel one thing or another. I mean, they say a word and you're like, okay. I mean, it didn't really... I, I didn't get like a warning flag, but I didn't necessarily got, get God saying, speaking in my heart and saying, yep, that's true. You know, okay, so this is kind of a neutral view. And for that, um, and I'll give some give some pointers here at the end, for how you deal with that is how you deal with really any word, that whether it's from God or not. And we'll look at that after we look at a false word. And the second uh, inner check that you'll experience is where God straight up tells you, no, that is not for me. That is That is not good. Um, a good example of this is I was going to a service. I was at a service, I should say. And um, in the middle of worship, a false prophet got up and said some some New Age nonsense. And um, a, another person inst- interrupted their word and said, no, that is not from God. You know, this is actually what God said. And um, everybody in the whole room felt it in, the, in, their, in their inner heart, in their inner spirit. Now, the problem here is that there's a lot of groups of Christians that believe that God can't speak in words nowadays. Um, I, I've ex- encountered many Baptists who hold this view. Um, and, and then on the other side of these charismatics who just believe in kind of just anything, just complete nonsense, and then, and then they'll believe in it. And so I, I think probably the healthiest, uh, the healthiest place to land on this is somewhere in the middle where um, you can say, yes, God does still speak, but not everything is literally from God. Like, just because somebody is convinced in their own heart that something is from God doesn't mean that it actually is from God. Somebody can be convinced of something, and that doesn't make it more true. It just means that they're convinced, and that's fine. Like, if, if, they, if they're convinced, that's fine. That doesn't mean that you have to believe that same thing. So then the third inner check that you'll experience is one where somebody says something, and instantly God speaks in your heart and says, yep, that's for me. You need to pay attention to that one. And um, so you're going to have one of those three inner checks. And it's very important to pay attention to that. Now, can you have an inner check that says, no, this is not from God when it is from God? Well, hypothetically, yes. If you are, um, if you are running from God and living in rebellion and you're not, uh, you're not you know, seeking after God and, and a word that's given that you know is for you, but you um, don't want to hear it, uh, or you've already convinced yourself of a lie, it's very easy to convince yourself that, no, this isn't really from God. And that's why it's important not to be um, an island unto yourself, so to speak. So let's look at a false word, and I'll, and I'll take you through it. Uh, this this false word had two, two parts to it. And the first part was to um, the person that was speaking. She said this, for me, he, he being God, God said that I needed not let this allow me to go backwards, let no corrupting talk come out of my mouth, but only what is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So as I felt before, I need to continue with my growth and maintain speaking in a manner that I can be encouraged with. He also said to be forgiving as he is forgiving that that was is hard, but I'll work on it. So the thing is here, it's, very, it's a very vague and generic kind of quote-unquote word. So it, it's hard to necessarily point to one specific thing, but you're going to see this, and, and in the next part I'll show you too, it really depends on mysticism. 
It really doesn't depend on what the Bible says or what somebody else said or what a pastor said. It's all about her and her emotions and her feelings. And um, we're going to look at, you know, looking at the character of a false prophet to see if somebody is a false prophet or not. So I don't really want to focus on um, whether the person is really from God or not. I just want to focus on whether the word is from God. Um, so if, if, th there's a few things here. First off, we'll take that first part that I needed to not let this allow me to go backwards. What is this? Well, she was in conflict on, in conflict with me. Um, she had uh, been gossiping and just doing some stuff in the middle of a Bible study. And so I told her, I said, hey, you know, that's not really going to work. Let's let's not do this. You know, you just need to knock it off with the gossiping. Let's let, we're not going to do that anymore. And um, she was very much so against it. And I said, look, you know, it, it brought it got brought up about how she was lying. And so I was saying, you know, you, you, about her lying. And she said, oh, no, I don't lie. So I gave her a couple examples. No, no, I don't lie. And it's like, well, I just gave you examples of, of lying. So these are the things that she was being corrected for doing something that was wrong. And she responded not with grace. She never admitted that she did anything wrong. And she... Um, she then, you know, started started lying about stuff and um, got very antagonistic about it. So then, um, I, I I brought it up again the next day just to clarify. Okay, yes, you know, it is, don't come to this, you know, basically don't come to this Bible study unless you're willing to stop with the gossip and, and the lies about stuff. Um, and she so wouldn't 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 uh, admit to anything. And then she brought and she gave me this quote unquote word from God. And um, so first off, right off the bat, allow this to allow me, I needed to not let this allow me to go backward. This being addressing your problems. Addressing problems isn't going backwards, that's going forward. Yeah, she has a huge problem with gossiping and lying. And so then when she's called on it, she's unable to cope with, with the problem. And that's, that's what God is quote unquote sheltering her from. You know, and, and if you look at the rest of this, it does, she never admits a fault. God never taught and tells her about an area that she needs to grow in, just that she needs to keep doing what she's already doing. And it, that just, it really doesn't have the ring of something that's, that's biblical. It's not something that somebody said to her. It's something that she just came up with herself. Let no corrupting talk. See, this is where it, it starts to sound biblical, and that's something that, that mystical people um, will do oftentimes, um, is they will, they will include parts of the Bible that sound spiritual. So this part is actually from God because it's from the Bible. Let no corrupting talk come out of my mouth. Yes, absolutely. And that's that's something that's for every Christian, though. It's a very generic thing. But only what is good for building up. Okay. All right. As fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Um, it really depends on what was meant by as fits the occasion. That could either be good or bad. It really just depends. Um, and then, so as I felt before, see, reaffirming what I already believe about myself, I need to continue with my growth. Yes, absolutely, that that's that's true, and maintain speaking in a man in a manner that I can be that I can be encouraged with. See, it's all about her. It's not about other people. Uh, it, that I need to keep doing this thing, and, and that I can be encouraged. Well, what about the people around you who you're gossiping and lying lying about, and too? You, you know, there's no there's no there's no concern for the body of Christ. It's all about herself. That that's kind of one of the first things that, that I notice in this kind of thing is is it's all about her, 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 her. Now, is it possible that that's um, from God? Well, nothing inherently was said that is against what against the Bible. So, hypothetically, this first part could at least be, as far as I can tell, could at least be from God. And I'm not going to say that God didn't speak to her about herself. That's 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 fine. Like, if she wants to claim that, there's no way that I can disprove that. God didn't come to me in a vision or a dream and say, no, I didn't, I, he didn't do that. So I ultimately have no way of knowing for sure um, whether or not God gave this first part. Now, the second part, I can know that it wasn't really from God because it goes against what the Bible says. So I know that God is not, God does not contradict himself. He is not a liar. So I know that I have to depend between a word given by somebody who doesn't know me very well or the Bible. Well, it's going to be the Bible. Even if, even if this person did know me um, significantly well, I still wouldn't believe that person over the Bible. And so, and maintain speaking in a manner that I can be encouraged with. Um, she was not doing that, actually. She was, like I said, lying and gossiping. She was being very rude and hateful to me, um, and as well as to others. Um, she always had her mouth going. And if you know anything about talking, the more you talk, the more likely you are to say something stupid. 
Um, so that that's right right there. Um, he also said to be forgiving as he is forgiving. Now, see, that's something that could have been from God. Yes, forgive. As, but here's the thing. If somebody says something that offends you, just because you're offended doesn't mean that what they said was wrong. It means that you were offended. So if somebody says something and it's an area that you genuinely do need to improve on, well, the answer seems very obvious. You should definitely improve on that. Was it attacking her? No. I, a pastor, approached somebody who was um, lying and gossiping in the middle of a Bible study and told her not to do it. That's not something bad. That's not tearing her down. So let's kind of move on here. And that that was, I don't know exactly what's being said here. And that was, is hard. And that maybe, and that is hard, but I'll work on it. Eh, whatever. Okay, so nothing really here that's that's anti-God. But then you get to the second part. And then she said, for you, for you, me, me being you, he said brotherly love. That you should know God teaches us to love one another and to live by that. To aspire to live quietly and mind your own affairs that you need to reserve yourself and how you think and act toward others. When I asked how to tell you this so I wouldn't seem so poignant, God said the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. So first thing you'll notice is just how unclear it is and how much it depends on, on mysticism. Brotherly love. That's that's not that's not a sentence. That that's a state that's that's an that's an unclear statement. Brotherly love. What did I do that's not loving? Addressing somebody who's gossiping and lying in the thing? I never did anything that was unloving to her. See what I mean? Like the the there there, there was never a situation where I where I did something that was that I wouldn't stand behind. And so then she says, brother the love. Well, could that be from God? Well, hypothetically, yeah. Um, it's a good thing to, to love. But here's the thing. Just because you love somebody doesn't mean that you don't do your job as a pastor. See, the, the, the job of a pastor, not just a pastor, the, the job of Christians is to be discerning. See, there's that one part in Matthew that says, don't be judgmental or don't judge. So everybody just assumes who doesn't read the Bible that that means that Christians are not to be Judgment. Uh, 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 what am I saying? Uh, critical. That they're not to, not to be attend, not to analyze things. Just believe it and love and sway back and forth. But the thing is, even as she sh as she has shown with this word that she gave me, even she is practicing judge judging. She is judging whether she thinks a word is from God. She is judging me in the word, and um, she was being very judgmental by the things that she said before the word. Everything that I said, hey, you know, you're gossiping in Bible, so let's not do that. Oh, well, you gossip too. It's like, okay, that's not really what we're talking about, and no, I don't. But, you know, going back to this, so brotherly love, is that is that from God? Well, yeah, everybody should show love. But once again, just because I love somebody doesn't mean that as a pastor, I don't have to approach things that are heretical or false or people who are claiming to be of the, of the body and are, and are wanting to be members of the church who are causing problems. As a pastor, I have to do that. It's part of your job. Like, if pastors are actually specifically tasked with this. In fact, one part uh, in Titus, Paul says, you know, that Paul and that Christians, uh, I'm sorry, that, that pastors have absolute authority in the, in the, in the church. So that they have to take care of these things. Um, Hebrews talks about how you should make sure that they don't have to do it with groaning um, be, because of your attitude. Uh, but different things like that. So, yes, Christians are supposed to be um, where they are um, analyzing things and seeing the, if they're really from God. Pastors even more so because they're not just seeing if it's something's from God. They're also protecting the church and addressing. It says to encourage, to rebuke, to exhort. So... Um, if I as am a pa am a pastor and I'm not rebuking when something is wrong, I'm not doing my job as a pastor. And not only did she not understand this, but she doesn't understand the idea of authority at all. That Christ is the head, and that pastors serve in the place of, of Christ in the in the local church. That this is something that God has appointed them to do. And that addressing an area of, of, of something that's wrong is not being judgmental and hateful. It is doing what God has tasked you to do. It's just like the prophets of the Old Testament. They weren't being hateful. They were telling the word that, that God told them to say. So, brotherly love, yeah, that could be from God, but it didn't fit the situation. That you, and this wasn't something that God was impressing on my heart. And... Um, 
I didn't really feel one way strong, strong or another about this word until I got to this next part. That you should know God teaches us to love one another and to live by that. Okay. Yes, that is true. God does teach us to, li and to love one another, but to live by that. She got hung up on this. What does it mean to live by love? Well, it doesn't just mean flowers and rainbows and you don't say anything against against each other and you just, oh, we can all just coexist together and, and, and bad things and false things don't need to be addressed and you can just agree to disagree and, you know, we don't have to grow and mature and there's there's no authority structure and, um, you know, you don't really have to believe in the Bible. You can, you can read the Bible and that's cute and everything, but only for the parts that, you know, uh, don't contradict what I already want to believe in. Th that's nonsense. Nonsense. To aspire to live quietly and mind your own affairs. God never once gave this instruction, first off, to pastors, and second off, to people who were um, talking to a fellow Christian that was um, in error. In fact, Matthew 18 sa says that when we see a, bro see a brother or sister in Christ who is sinning, we go to that brother or sister in Christ and, and we, we approach them on it. And if they don't listen, then we go and get others involved too. And... Um, so there's that, and then the person that she was uh, lying about and gossiping about, I actually got them involved in the conversation because she wouldn't admit that she was lying and gossiping. And I, and I brought them in and I said, hey, um, did you say this? And it turned out that no, she had actually twisted what the person said um, because there was another person that she was talking about that she didn't like. So all this, all this word was given in response to that. So you can see, given the context, that no, it wasn't from God. This wasn't something that God's been talking about. It wasn't something that my inner circle of people who I really trust, my mentors, um, agreed with. It wasn't something that my spirit agreed with. It wasn't something that the Bible agrees with. So when 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 uh, Second Timothy, if I believe, it might be First Timothy. I, I believe I actually think it's First Timothy. When when First Timothy says says to aspire to live quiet. Um, as they're talking, they're talking about not being a nuisance in the community, and then the other, only other context where it's talking about that is when when he's talking about in First Corinthians that women shouldn't be interrupting the service, um, you know, by by talking and, and being disruptive in the middle of it. So that that really has nothing to do with what I was talking about. So to aspire to live quietly and mind your own affairs, basically mind your own business. Christians are never told to mind, your own, mind their own business. They are meant to be a community and a family, and they're meant to be there for each other and to correct each other and to love each other and to be there for each other. And um, part of that is when a brother or sister is in error, you go to them, even more so as a leader. So that is very much so against what the Bible teaches. And so I know that that part is a false word because I can compare it to what the Bible says. And then I can go to that part of the Bible that she's quoting to sound spiritual, and I can interpret that part and say, does that apply to this? Well, no, because Paul didn't say to live quietly in terms of never rocking the boat and never in the church, cor excuse me, correcting error. That's, excuse me, that's definitely not what he's talking about. That you need to reserve yourself in how you think and act toward others based on what? This isn't something that I struggle with. I, I don't struggle to reserve myself in how I think and act towards others. In fact, I'm more of an introvert. I, I don't like conflict. You know, I really like talking to people face to face. And maybe a select few if I really like the person. But um, large groups kind of irritate me and, um, you know, that kind of stuff it is something that, um, almost like autistic almost, where, where loud noises and all this different stuff, it just kind of puts me off. So um, this isn't really something that I see fitting. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that she's saying you need to reserve yourself and how you think and act towards others. She's talking about um, maybe my, maybe how I was done with the situation. Um, see, I had this friend and this friend, I, 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 told, I told him, I said, hey, you know, it's not a good idea to date people that are in this Bible study. It's going to cause a problem and, you know, all this different stuff. And I was talking to him about, you know, the kind of traits to look for in, in a girl. And then he started dating this girl that gave this false word. And so I, um, they they kept breaking up and getting back together on and on, over and over and over again. So then he says, one of the times he's asking for my advice, and I, and I told him straight out. I said, hey, you know, no, this is this is not a good idea. You guys don't have anything in common. You're not attracted to her. Um, you know, she's she's from an occultic background with like Wicca and stuff. Um, she you know has conversations with demons. This is not a good idea. You you definitely need to get out of this con out of this re relationship. And um, another time that they broke up, I said the same thing over again about how it, she, they weren't good for each other. And so this is she took this as me gossiping. 
I was talking to a friend who asked advice about his relationship. That's not gossip. That's interacting with a friend about something who I knew before she even came into the picture. And I'm assuming that that's what, she, that, that's what this part is talking about, but it doesn't really, um, it, it's not really something that I struggle with. Like I, I didn't feel any conviction whatsoever that you need to reserve yourself. Reserve myself how? I'm already too reserved. You know, I, I, it's not clear what's meant. And um, there's just a lot of confusion. When, when a word is false, I notice it'll have the sound of spirituality, but it won't be clear. And when something is from God, it won't, maybe, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it maybe might not sound so, so good, spiritually speaking, but it'll have something that, that is just like, where you just, you know in your heart, yes, this, this, this is from God. Um, our word was given just last Sunday, you know, that was talking about uh, 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 the person gave the word and said that um, the, the last year was, was very difficult and that the, and, but, but that God heard, heard my groaning. And that was something that was very much so um, forefront in my mind and that I'd been very much so dealing with. I mean, year after year after year of bad things happening, um, my, one of my sons, um, we thought he had leukemia. That was a huge, um, huge tax emotionally. Um, you know, lost our best friends uh, who betrayed us and left us with like, for no reason and with no explanation. Um, you know, just bad thing after bad thing, divorces in the family and, and, uh, children dying. And it's just so many different things. It was really hard. And then to have God say in a word how he heard my groaning, I mean, that's that was very encouraging. Um, and saying, you know, that, you know, the, the, the next, next part of the word went on to say that I needed to um, to seek him now because this, this is the time. It's not going to get easier. It's not going to be like um, there's going to be a better time to seek him than right now. Um, you know, and yeah, absolutely. That, that was that. It, it, agree, it, it agreed with my inner spirit. It agrees with the Bible. Um, the word was really spot on. Was it hateful? No. Was it loving? Of course. And um, so I think that it was not only the word of God, but the, but the heart of God, which is a very important combination. I mean, First Corinthians talks about this, where you can have all the right words, and you can know all the secrets, but if it's not spoken in love, it, it doesn't even matter. It's just a noisy sound. Um, so... <clears throat> You need to reserve yourself in how you think and act towards others. I don't really have an attitude problem with with, with anybody in my life. I, I don't really. I, I have I have an ex sister in law who badmouthed me to the entire community, and caused a lot of problems and little fires I had to put out. I feel no resentment. Ever even her, I, I'm totally fine with it. I see her in the store, and I don't feel anything bad. I don't feel like I have to run away and hide. At all. Um, this person who gave me the false word. I don't want her at that Bible study until she can stop uh, stop gossiping and, and that kind of stuff and lying and stuff. But I don't have a, I don't have like a attitude problems with her. I don't I don't hate her. I want the best for her. In fact, I pray for the best for her. God that you would break through her her hard heart, her years of of, of living in the occult. That you would you know speak to her heart and help her to know you in a deeper way. That that she would you know start reading her Bible and and know the real Jesus because she says that she knows and loves Jesus and stuff. But the Jesus that she talks about, as is often common in the occult, isn't the Jesus of the Bible. It's like this made up Jesus who, um, you know, has no problem with you, but has a problem with everybody that you don't like. And uh, different stuff like that. And it's just, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Um, I am frustrated with my friend for going out with her. And I, I it, it's very much so negatively impacted him. And he's, you know, definitely changed for the worse. But um, I don't, I don't like necessarily being around him too much right now. But uh, I don't have a problem with them like there's and and i mean I, I really feel like you know that's that's not a contradiction i don't feel like um and uh so how i how i think towards others definitely i i don't think that that's that that's on and how i act towards others so what did i do that would that would mean that i need to reserve how i act no, nothing i actually usually i actually kind of withdraw and kind of just let things play out um, and as a pastor, that you can definitely see where that would be a problem. When I asked how to tell you this so I wouldn't seem so poignant, God's, it, it's interesting that, that, that God you know, told her something that so validated her view of me. And uh, when she doesn't really even know me, <laughs> it just was everything that she wanted God to say about me and everything she wanted God to say about her. Super convenient. And um, then that 
she even knew that she was saying it in an abrasive, rude way. And then she says this little bit of, once again, jerking a scripture out of context, which doesn't apply to the situation and doesn't bring any clarity whatsoever. You'll find that God brings clarity and Satan brings confusion. That's almost always the case. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. What has the Lord sworn? Look, none of this in this whole thing was a promise from God or something that God swore about or anything here. It doesn't fit the situation. You know, it's really steeped in mysticalism and it's jerking scriptures out of context to sound spiritual, but it's not. So I hope that that kind of helps you see how you can tell if a word is from God or not. So a real quick guide here. Um, these quick, very quick three things. Somebody comes up to you and says, hey, um, I think that I have a word from God for you. Besides those two checks that I said at the beginning, there's just really quick three things. First off, know the Bible. I'm not talking about read it on occasion. I mean, know it. Inside, outside, backwards, forward, you know the thing. Know what's in there. Know what it actually says. When somebody when somebody quotes it, don't just take their word for it. Look it up and look to see what it actually means. Um, don't rely on, on, on mystical books about the Bible. Rely on the Bible itself. Maybe read commentaries. There's, there's great commentaries out there that can help you get a, a fuller picture. There's different translations. If you're using like the King James, for instance, you're not going to have a very good idea of what the Bible actually says. Um, the wording is just too awkward and old, and it, the, the, the manuscripts that it follows just aren't as reliable. It's just really not the best place to start, um, especially if you're younger than like 60. Um, and then, uh, but then other ones might be a little bit hard for you to understand, like the NASB. It might be, it, it's good, but it might be hard for you to understand. And if you don't understand it, what's the point of even reading it? So start out with somewhere like the, the, the newest NIV, and that'll give you a basic understanding. Uh, then go to maybe the CSB. That'll give you a, a, a more accurate, I, I feel like, a more accurate understanding. Read the New Living Translation if you want a more general idea of what's being said overall in the passage, but take it with a grain of salt. And then go to like the ESV or the NASB and, and, find, um, and, and find a more, you know, hey, what's being said here. Um, so know, know the Bible, really know it. And really, I would say that I've been studying the Bible um, over 20 years, and I would say that I still don't feel like I know it. So don't do that thing where you don't go to church and you, you do your own little thing in, in, your, in your house and you don't ever witness to people or talk about God or, you know, think about God, but then you think you know all the all the secrets of the Bible. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't. Sing it off. Ask others more mature than you. This is where going to a good church really comes in handy. Um, you're able to talk to people and say, hey, you know, uh, I got this word. I have an inner circle, especially being a pastor. You definitely need an inner circle. People you can go to. People who aren't under you, who aren't in the church that you can have private conversations with, but they are able to give you genuine advice. And the, the things said in that word were not something that I struggle with. It's not something that, they, that they've that they been talking to me about my struggling with. It's not something that when they read it, they said, oh yeah, that's from God. They, they said, nope, that, that's not that's not on. That That's off. And, uh, you know, these are these are people who I didn't tell the situation to, I told the word to. Um, and then the third thing is, uh, pray about it. You know, it, 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 if there is even the slightest doubt in your mind that something's from God, even, um, if, even if it is a false word and God can still speak to you through the false word, then pray about it. Like, like for instance, that word that, that she gave, is that a false word? I am no, no doubt in my mind that it's a false word. But are there areas that I can learn from? Yes, absolutely. Brotherly love. I think that that is, a, that is something that we all need to be reminded of. Yes. That, and it's a very generic thing, but it's still something, you know, hey, am I being loving? And do I actually care about, you know, um, do I care? Do I get irritated because she gave a false word or because she gave a false word to me? Do I get irritated because she's not growing or because she thinks that she's growing? See, what is actually bothering me about the person? See what I mean? And when you start to really, really be real with yourself, I, I think that that really helps. And prayer is one area that God can really speak to our innermost being. Now, obviously, he can't really speak that much if you're the one doing all the talking. <laughs> so there is has to be some, some listening, which is why knowing the Bible and praying really go hand in hand. Really take time to stop and listen. Acknowledge who God is. Silence your own thoughts and just listen to God for a bit. A lot of times people go to prayer and they already know what God's going to say. They already have their mind made up. They already know all the things that they're doing right and everybody else is doing wrong. And that's not the way to grow. So I hope that this, you know, helped you uh, to, to see um, how, how, you can, uh, how you can grow and, and, and how you can, when somebody gives you a word, how you can say, okay, is this from God or is it not from God? And uh, 
There, we're going to talk more about um, analyzing the character of the person itself who gives the word. So this is a, obviously, I, I hope you've seen, noticed this is a series. We talked about um, how not everything is false. Now we're talking about how to tell if a word is false. And then we're going to go on to a teacher, how to tell if a teacher or a speaker is false. We'll talk about that next time. Um, so you guys have a great uh, new year. And I thank you guys so much for watching.